age of the influencer is over. The time of the buck has come. Alrighty then. So, I'm doing this voiceover. I'm hunched over because I tweaked my back, which you'll see later on in the in the footage. I was wearing my Russian shoes. The Russian shoes gotta go. The Russian bots, they made those shoes and they were they're, they're sabotaged my spine. Spinal. Anyways. I guess I explain that later, so I don't want to go into too much detail. But I'll explain my back feeling. So this sort of back tweak that I've got is the uh, one that makes you walk like an old man, and so you uh, basically when you first when you stand up uh, for the first little while after standing up from sitting down from the seated position, uh, you will probably be a little bit hunched over, okay, in the in the lower back that is, and uh, I have to like extend my glutes or my hips fully just to pull myself up so that I'm walking uh, I'm walking standing up straight although it seems like all the old people in my family are all in t-rex mode so uh, although I don't really want to be you know I like the t-rex I think it's cool but I don't I don't really want to be the t-rex man I'll leave that to the rest of them Yes, yeah, so the press was feeling pretty good today. My, my form is getting better and better. And what I figured out is to, um, you know, do my hip thrust. And then when I do my layback, I press the bar up. I press the bar up and I fully extend my elbows. For, well, this is just for the last rep. I fully extend my elbows before I put my head through. Instead of trying to do both at the same time. And anyways... Arms are looking skinny today, although I feel way better. Other than this freaking back tweak, I figured what yesterday's problem was. Oh yeah, yesterday I thought I had I thought I had a hernia because I uh, had this like inflamed bump, oh you know, over top of uh, the lower abdomen region. Okay, so it wasn't a hernia; it was just a zit. Okay. <laughs> But, you know, sometimes I get into these modes where I'm, I'm like a hypochondriac. It's like, oh, things are going pretty good for me. And then I'm just like, like one, one thing. It, uh, you know, gets on my mind. It's like, oh, okay, that's probably, it's probably cancer. Or, oh, that's probably something terrible. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. That's, this is sort of a hard habit to break. I remember Lee Priest was talking about that, I'm pretty sure. And he said that, um, it's like, oh, well, it's going pretty good, and, and you're just like, you're you're basically anticipating catastrophe, and ruining the good times. And uh, Stephen Bolling was talking about that too. How it's like, you know, nine out of ten things in your life can be going well, but then you focus on the one thing, and then uh, then it's a living hell. So that might be, uh, it might just be a sort of mental hurdle that I've got to practice. Uh, um. I gotta practice uh, jumping over, I suppose. Here we go. RDLs was feeling pretty good, and um, and the, the bench is feeling good. Although I've got a little bit of the the um, the pain, the chest pain, where it's like pulling when I'm at the top. It's, it's pulling in a weird position when I'm fully extended in the RDLs. Um, that had gone away for like two weeks. Came back, so. Uh, I was thinking of just doing bench like once a week and then doing press three days a week. But I think it's just going to be a matter of uh, just training through it like I had done for all the weeks prior to the two weeks that didn't hurt. Because it started hurting basically when I started recording lifting videos again. But it's, it's just an annoyance. It doesn't, it doesn't affect any of my lifts. This is a freaking angle. I didn't like how it kept on going out of focus.
All right. I think the tweak set's coming up. Oh, this is it. See? Russian shoes. Sabo. Sweet tan line. I wonder if we'll be able to see the, the butt wink. Because the... Well, look at this. If you see, if you watch my heels come off the ground a little bit when I'm at the bottom. And so, anyways, yeah, the problem is that the, the heels on these aren't as high as I need them to be for my uh, mobility or my lack of mobility, that is. Yeah, I felt a twinge in my back. Dropped the thing immediately. All right. Did all my warm-ups. Came back to this weight. Yeah, so, anyways, this was feeling pretty good. Boy. It's like some, one of the viewers, he said that I got to bring the cowboy boots back. And that was when I had the, I was using the Romalios for a while. You know, every time I, every time I try getting away from the cowboy boots, they pull me back in. I can do that. I can probably do that better, but I don't want to restart this. <laughs> they pull me back in. So I'm I, I think cowboy boots for life. That's what I gotta do. This guy that I was talking to on the Discord is from Germany and he's like, Well I I can't wear cowboy boots, it'll be too hot. I'm like, Yeah, and who else wears um who wears cowboy boots in Germany? Yeah. <laughs> That was a pretty good last rep. All right. So it's rainy here in Ireland. And that's what it feels like today. That's a nice place. I'd go there one day, maybe. Probably not, actually. I just thought of my last traveling experience. and That was probably enough for one lifetime. Well, maybe I'll go on to the U.S., but... Yeah. I don't know. The U.S. is nice. I'm trying to get this, I wanted to get a, this commentary done, and I just keep on, I, uh, once you, you go down like a Discord rabbit hole, where you just on it for, I gotta like just completely log out, otherwise I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm not gonna do anything other than talk, although for talking is good practice, when you've been a hermit for years, like as I have, so we got a new additions to the stack, a stragglers, Hong Chi. 500 milligram. I take... Uh, like I said, that this has a short half-life, so you want to take it multiple times throughout the day, but you have to take it on an empty stomach. And it takes a while for the stomach to empty out, in my opinion. And so if it's not empty, I just don't want to be wasting any. So what I do, instead of taking it multiple times throughout the day, I take it when I wake up, and because I don't eat for like an hour or so, maybe an hour and a half after I wake up. So... Because then I do my training most days, except for um, Wednesday, which is today. Um, so anyways, I take two grams when I wake up, and then I take two grams before bed. And I finish my last meal. Uh, it's it's all done like two hours before I go to bed. I took some niacin, and it's just starting to hit me. And the other thing, I started this again, ginkgo biloba. I'm going to do the lowest dose, 120 milligrams, and see what happens. Hopefully I can sleep tonight, because this sort of thing, um, it improves... Blood circulation. What does it say? Peripheral circulation supports cognitive function, and you know that's what I'm all about. I don't want to be up. I don't want to be up on stage giving a speech talking about corn pop and how the hair, the hair in the back of my legs was standing up, and because you know corn pop was a real bad dude. <laughs> um. Okay. Anyways. Hmm. Holy man, it's just starting to hit me. This is perfect. Give me red. I'm not really giving me that much more red than usual, frankly. And I don't know if you noticed this, but other than my double chin still being around, which is probably always going to be there, whatever, it might just be an angling issue. My my chin is always out angling every other part of my body, and so when you go this way, it doesn't look too bad. This looks like my it looks like my neck is so huge. Well, it's not anymore. It's just it's coming up into my face. Does anyone believe that? Anyways, I, I should have weighed myself this morning, but I, I'm down 
over 10 pounds since my press since my press peak and I, I suppose I can talk about that my uh, next idea for a cycle it's just gonna be a mini cycle no more trend I don't want to take trend ever again you feel fucking terrible you shouldn't be out of breath doing a set of five okay even when I was my fattest okay which was when I was a kid but when I was a, my fattest as a weightlifter 283 pounds and I had breasts and I was I hadn't sorry I had udders and I I was so fat I could barely fit into my jeans I wore like a 38 I think I could barely fit into them and um, I couldn't do up the top but I couldn't do up the button so I just put the belt on so that the zipper isn't getting all isn't getting you know too much there's just not getting ripped apart oh my goodness it's hitting me <laughs> you start to tingle in the face and then you start to feel uh, itchy I decided to take it today you know when you're a normie like me, nice, and that's our, uh, that's a normies or a, a sort of squares, um, I don't know, version of a recreational drug. Because you don't really feel most other supplements. Niacin, you definitely feel. Not niacinamide, niacin. And so anyways, trend sucks. Uh, well, actually, it's, I mean, it does its job, but I don't want to feel like that anymore. Because it's not going to be any good for my next cycle idea. So in September, I'm going to start bulking up again or just eating more because I need to get up to probably 280 pounds because I have to I, the, the idea is to find a uh, the balancing point between like where I can have like the the right amount of strength and the right amount of stamina because I want to do 500 pounds for 20 reps squats and uh, no knee sleeves and then I got I got my test suspension so I'll pop a shitload of that and so it'll be for like a, a month maybe five weeks and then in October I'll go for the I'll go for the set I told I told Chad and the other guys that I'm gonna go to the commercial gym to do it. That way I can show off, or maybe I don't show off. But that'll be the mogging. That'll be called the mogging. Mm. All right. But yeah, that test suspension. There's trend suspension. I test suspension that I've used works so well that I there's. I mean, if it's not, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I don't know if trend suspension will lower your VO2 max. Because the trend isn't usually lower. It takes a little while before the um, stamina reduction kicks in. But it might just also be like a drug thing because, or a, a half-life thing. Because trembling acetate still takes a day and a half, two days to hit you. And trend E obviously takes even longer than that. It'll take like a week. <sighs> and so, anyways, what have I seen for lifting recently? No. Quick little tip for training back to failure. A lot of people are asking. It's something. Well, I don't. I don't even want to really go into that actually. But oh, one of the guys on the Discord. He's been training for nine weeks, and he's already stronger than my. It's not. It's um, it's not really like my secret program. It's basically starting strength NLP, uh, where you're just adding weight per each workout. So he's doing his last workout was th uh, deadlifts 380 for a set of five, and he weighs a hundred, little over 180 pounds. He's working up for nine weeks, okay, and he's stronger than my friend, who's been working, who's been working on and off, but he's been working up for years, okay. Nine, you get beat in nine weeks. Are you fucking kidding me? So, if you well, if you're too cheap to actually eat enough food, then uh, and if you don't want to give up drinking beer, because you know if you want to be weak, you just drink fucking alcohol regularly. Because especially if you're natural, it's gonna you know it kills your hormone, it kills your testosterone level, it tears off mTOR. Terrible idea. And um, yesterday I was talking to my customer. You know, you've, uh, you've probably met a few of these people, but boom, boomers have no idea. They don't even have a clue. They're not even a novice. They're like a level zero in their experience or knowledge of nutrition. I look fucking terrible. That means the niacin's kicking in. <laughs> um, well, this guy says his tip for looking younger, which... I might, which is something that I'm interested in, is uh, 
cutting, like reduce, reducing the amount of DHT compounds that you can take, which is pretty easy. You just don't use any. I did take 10 milligrams of Anvar today because I want to see if that can help me because my, my, my chest started hurting again. It was, well, it, it wasn't hurting me for like two weeks. And then uh, yesterday I was feeling it a bit when I did my RDLs. And so anyways, there's that, there's lo losing weight. And then there's, uh, cause he says that if you get a little bit of a leaner face, then it will, um, it makes you look younger. Although that's not necessarily, I mean, there's like a balancing point there because some people like it, cause it does stretch out this, it puffs up the skin. And so reduces the appearance of wrinkles. Cause you see these these like fat people that are on biggest loser and they lose a shitload of weight. And their face actually looks worse. I mean, obviously they're healthier and the rest of the body looks better. Except for maybe some like hanging skin. But having hanging skin is, is still, and you're still in a way healthier state than you were weighing 400 pounds. Um, despite what people say nowadays, that you're, you're healthy at any size. Sure. Sure. <laughs> and anyway, I am planning to lose weight. I'm going to go down into the, I'll probably go down to like 260, maybe into the 250s. Getting up to 280 again in September is not going to be that fun, but I'll, I'll take the MK677. Although that kind of reduces your stamina too. I just have to do a shitload of test. <sighs> Which is no fucking problem. Test is the best. And um, you don't really need too much else. Oh my goodness. It also makes my eyes get... I get these wrinkles and bags from the niacin. It'll make my eyes turn a little bit red too. I don't actually know what the flush is. I suppose we can look it up, but the, the, the flush, what 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 causes that or what's the benefit of that? Well, the main reason I'd be taking out niacin is niacinamide because niacinamide is, um, I think, toxic to your liver. And it also might not have as pronounced of, of an effect because another thing is that, you know, niacin increases NAD+. Plus. NAD+, plus has a beneficial effect in mitochondrial function. And it also changes the, um, I think it reduces the number of a lipoprotein little a um uh, what is that that's like some sort of cholesterol cluster because that the little a is the is the cholesterol structure i think that accumulates in your arteries that's the one that actually matters in terms of uh, accumulating plaque so uh what else is it um, oh, it like breaks up fatty acid deposits or something like that, or it breaks them up. And so you can use it as a detox. You can bind it with charcoal because charcoal is a binder for these toxins. And then you'll piss everything out or shit everything out, I guess. Maybe sweat everything out. Yeah. So. Mm, strike list. This, this was actually pretty cheap. And this is, this is pretty cheap considering I'm only, you know, only going to take one pill a day. If I manage to sleep tonight, that is. Uh, I'm still taking creatine monohydrate because there's creatine monohydrate is also beneficial to your brain and well, basically your whole body because it donates a creatine phosphate to the um, what is it adenosine triphosphate it it, it donates something because when your, your body is like doing all these chemical reactions or these sorts of things it, it'll deplete some of the ATP ATP CP or whatever and the creatine monohydrate is like a it donates you just have more um, available uh, in like there's more reserve there there's a reserve available when you take this for when you're you know you're doing lots of um, anything because your whole body is every single cell or has mitochondria as far as I know so anyways Holy cow. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta finish this commentary before I look back on Discord. Otherwise, I'm gonna be too distracted. So, um, the hell was I going on about? Oh, yeah, boomers. Holy shit. Because the, the boomers' height, the, their greatest concern for food is whether or not it's tasty. That's, that's the uh, most, that's the most important thing. And that's why. And, you know, they've been, and then you've got Canada's Food Guide or the Food Pyramid that tells you, especially the modern one, it's like, oh, uh, eating eating chocolate or eating, um, what the hell, cereal is healthier than eating eggs. Oh, okay. Or and eating steak is really bad for you. It's going to make your heart explode. Maybe a slight exaggeration there. Maybe not. So, uh, this is coffee number two. 
I should have started. I just got to chew some nicotine gum and then I'll really be ADD. So, it's this lady was telling me that she's just, she's been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes for a month. Because I just saw her. I asked her if she went on a date because she was wearing a dress. And then I'm, I saw the thing. I'm like, oh, no, you were at the hospital. And she's like, yeah, diabetes school. <laughs> diabetes school. And then the doc, she was telling the doctor about what she eats. And she, she told the doctor, well, she, the doctor's like, what do you eat for breakfast? And she says she goes to Tim Hortons. She gets a breakfast sandwich and she has an iced cappuccino. I gotta look that up. She was terribly mistaken uh, um, about its sugar content. So we're gonna figure that out right now. Iced cap. Apparently, I thought she said it was made with half and half cream. She gets the really rich one, apparently. Nutritional information. I always think the Tim Hortons ice cap, or at least when I've had it, because my, my sister sometimes, she used to insist that I would taste some things. And the, her, my sister and my brother-in-law, they drink, I look so fucking terrible right now. Holy shit, this camera, I gotta get a new camera. I gotta get a camera with a young filter. Anyways, my sister and my brother-in-law, they have reheated coffee. They'll get it at like nine o'clock at night at Tim Hortons and then reheat it in the morning. Reheated coffee, it's so fucking cheap. I mean, this is instant coffee. But I'm instant coffee, instant Nescafe, what is this, Nescafe Intense or Nestle Intense coffee. That's way fucking better than a reheated Tim, Tim Hortons coffee. They don't even get dark roast. Tim Hortons regular roast is terrible. Because for a while, I think Tim Hortons was losing customers to McDonald's because Tim Hortons lost their contract with this bean supplier and then their coffee was shit. And then McDonald's had really good coffee for, I don't know, like three, four, five years. Then McDonald's coffee got really bad and I'm pretty sure it's still really bad. But Tim Hortons Dark Roast is okay. Anyways, select your size. What size does she get? A medium? Well, let's say she got a medium, okay? Because you don't want to be the girl that's getting a large because you don't want to be large Marge, right? So, uh, it's only 360, gra 360 calories, 48 grams of carbs, uh, 47 grams of that is sugar. And, of course, the doctor told her th this is this is like boomer nutrition it's like where you look at the nutrition facts and for them reading the nutrition facts reading the nutrition facts for me is like uh it's like second nature it's something i can do it really fast i already know what the thing's going to have in it maybe I'll, I'll probably just look at the ingredients list to see if it has seed oils in it at this point but what they'll do they're looking at it and it's like they it's like they're reading um ancient greek okay that's why that's how tough it is for them and so what they tell them to do is to is that where, however much fiber in it is in it, you subtract that from the, the amount of carbs. And so that, that's only a consideration that you'd have if you were eating, like, grains, basically. Or, uh, like, you know, cereal, which you shouldn't be having if you're a diabetic. Oh, man. Imagine being a doc. I mean, you're, when the, these sorts of doctors that deal with these diabetic people, I don't think they really know what the hell's going on. Or if they do, they're just they're not steering people in the right direction. Or maybe you have to treat people like they're a baby, and you're like, oh well, you know, you gotta feed them what they want, what they'll eat, whatever they'll eat. And so some people will just feed their kids like fucking candy because that's better than nothing, I suppose. So. You know, you, you you know, like, oh, it's got, um, you know, you're eating a you know, Nesquik cereal. It's got uh, two grams of fiber and a bowl has like 32 grams of carbs. I don't know, 12 grams of sugar. Okay, and so now it's only 30 grams of carbs because of the two grams of fiber. Okay, and then you're tracking all these fucking things, completely missing the plot. Still, your diet's still all, it's still fucked up. It's still fucked. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. But then again, these people, these sorts of people that get type 2 diabetes are um, the low, they're low IQ. And is, is there, there might be no hope for them. There might be no hope for them. And it's not a problem when you, it's, it's not a problem unless you have uh, socialized medicine like we do in Canada. In the U.S. they still, they have Medicare, Medicaid, and huge, huge spending. I think Medicaid and Medicare, that's Bigger than the you know the uh, GDP of Canada, how much they spend on that, those two things, because that's like I'm pretty sure that's like half the budget. People are always talking about the military spending. I'm pretty sure Medicare and Medicaid is actually is still way more than what they spend on the military. So, yeah. Then you have those other social like, you know, you've got these other welfare programs, and it's like, the um. 
like one welfare program creates a, one welfare program creates another welfare program creates another welfare program because you know these people that are that are on like the fourth generation of welfare they're not eating that healthy they're eating the um the highly processed foods that are really yummy really yummy they're eating hot pockets hot pockets they're pro hot pockets I, maybe they're not even, i mean the last time i thinking about eating a hot pocket to me is disgusting when you're an adult, you need like craft dinner, um, what the hell, all those other sorts of things that you'd eat as a kid, hop and goes, uh, caramel, or eating like cookies that come in a box, like Oreo, Chips Ahoy, Chunks Ahoy, celebration cookies. Those, that chocolate on those are actually, actually isn't too bad. Or eating like Viva Puffs or Fig Newtons. Through the whole list, I mean, eating Chef Boyardee as an adult. There's people who still do this shit. I was in line at the grocery store, and this guy in front of me, he's a year old, year older than me. He uh, he had frozen pizza, Casa de Mama, okay, house Mama's house, Mama's house pizza, okay. At 32, no, 30, it'll be 30. He's, he, I'll be 32 this year. He's 33 years old, and that's what he's eating. Another guy I was I was at the variety store, probably the same age as me. Some like uh, I don't know. Guy he he came in and I guess what he he got a Powerade, okay, and a chocolate bar. That was gonna be his snack. Okay. Like the guy's like you know in your thirties and that's what you're eating. It's like Nick Rochefort telling the story about his cousin. They're like oh we're gonna go out and eat what did you, what did you, what did you, you gonna you want to come and he's like no I had something. I had something from the vending machine. He ate a fucking bag of chips for supper. <laughs> that's fuck. That'd be that's fucking embarrassing, or it should be. <sighs> Crap dinner. Another one I liked when I was a kid was hot stuffs, which was some sort of like I don't even know what the hell you'd call that, but it was some sort of like pastry or grain thing, and it was. Inside of it was cheese and ham. And there's extremely salty, although salt isn't really a, isn't really bad, um, despite what your doctor might say. And that's another thing is that the doctor told this lady that she shouldn't have half and half cream in her um, in her ice cap because it's bad for her high, heart because of you know the high saturated fat. Doctor doesn't know shit. Doctor doesn't know shit. And um, what the hell else? Uh, yeah, that's what your doctor's telling you. This, like, um, they, they still don't know anything about nutrition. They don't know anything about weightlifting. My customer's kind of messed up. She has, she's had three heart attacks. I don't know. That could be, um, I don't know why she's had three heart attacks. She didn't go into the details of that. But, um, her, sta her stamina is terrible. Because apparently every time you have a heart attack or some sort of inflammation of the heart, like myocarditis, I'll probably get demonetized if I say that. Although I'm not even monetized right now because there's they has some stupid thing. It's like, oh, I gotta link, I gotta link this thing to my website, and I gotta verify my identity. Oh my goodness! Can't they just fucking bank it all? And then when I do that, then I, then I can get paid out. I mean, sure, it's not gonna be that much yet until uh, until maybe some big channel share me it'll be like too buff for this and he shared my instagram thing now I, i'm up to almost 2,000 followers from less than 200 so maybe that'll happen on youtube as well um holy cow yeah every time apparently you have a heart attack or inflammation of the heart your heart loses function permanently which is terrifying and that lady was telling me about her niece who's 40 years old who's had diabetes uh i don't know how long she's had diabetes but she's lost a toe if that's not a wake-up call, I don't know what it is. I'd be pretty upset if I lost a toe, no matter which toe it was. Some John Baker, John Baker MD, the, uh, the guy who does the carnivore diet, he was telling a story about this, um, I think when he was doing his residency, about this doctor, because he's a surgeon, so it was about this other doctor that was dealing with somebody who had some sort of, because um, apparently these amputations are caused by like a lack of circulation, to a certain area, usually the extremities. And it's caused by like glucose block buildup. So you've got like a sugar clog in your toe. And so I'm sure, you know, a doctor could be a little more, um, explained a little more, but that's, I'm pretty, that's my understanding as a layman. You got, you basically, your toe is full of honey and, um, 
this the, the doctor instead of like cutting off like his toe or half his foot he went all the way up to uh, i'm pretty sure just cutting below the knee and then he's like well why'd you then sean, I, this sean was younger at the time he's like well why'd you do that he's like well that guy frankly he'll be back and he'll be back in like two uh, in like six months and then he'll we'll have to cut off his foot and then six months after that or maybe a year after that then we'll have to cut off the entire shin and so this guy was just saving time or saving um people's resources i guess by skipping all the way up to the um because I guess if you don't have extremities, then you may not have that issue. But that's fucking terrible. You'd rather eat disgusting food than be a fully intact, functioning human being. What the hell's wrong with people? Oh, shit. Starts with the foreskin. No, I don't know. I don't think most... Uh, that's not really your choice as a child, but... Man, that's got to fucking hurt. Just, I'm all right. You just watch a video and you, that's my freaking customer was telling me. This is kind of a segue, but I, it's amputation either way. And so, it, or amputation as well. So it, you know, it kind of coincides with what I was talking about before. But if you know, if you, if you're kind of like on the fence about, about, um, circumcision, like you don't really care, you never looked into it. Like I'm sure lots of normies have on. I mean, most people are pretty domesticated, and that's not... And, you know, caring about... Another thing is, like, caring about men suffering. Uh, that's um, that's just wrong, because then we're not caring about women suffering, right? So, um, you know, there's these silly signs. It's like, save the titties, save the ta-tas, to show some support for, like, um, women who have breast cancer or breast cancer research. But what about, like, things that are totally unnecessary, like, chopping off the foreskin, which is apparently a third of the skin of the penis. All right, you don't really, you don't see too many activists, or they're, they're labeled as extremists. I mean, some of the, it's just like the abortion people, okay, which I mean, I'm, I'm anti-abortion too. But you see, you see the imagery, and it's extremely powerful. It's extremely powerful. You see the, um, you, you see what, what it is, okay, the late-term abortions. So I remember when Stephen Molyneux made a video about this, the truth about circumcision, and you see them doing it to a baby. The baby is not crying. The baby is in extreme pain. And so, yeah, that's um. I remember I talked to this one girl. This is this is one this is one of my online dating ventures, and I talked to this girl and I asked her opinion on abortion. She she didn't really care. Okay, well maybe, maybe what if you were the baby? Okay. What if you were the baby? It was like a, a, it was just a lack of empathy. What if you were the baby? Because some people would be like, "Oh well, you know, then I'm not gonna have a very good life." It's like, okay, so some people haven't even admitted. I remember I saw this one thing, and I think it was like an iDubs video or a clip from an iDubs thing. Because I don't, I don't watch iDubs. But it was about this lady who was complaining about being alive, or being born, and so she that's why she supported abortion. You know, I don't really like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think he's an amoral, like, will to power sort of individual. But in the movie Last Action Hero, the kid says to him, they, they go back to the real world from the movie world. They go to the real world, and the kid's like, you know what? That's life, and life sucks. And then Arnold's like, life is what you make it, okay? Which, you know, there there are um, sorts of deterministic things in life that you don't really have too much control over, like, um, you know, genetic traits, like... I have a gigantic nose. I have a terrible hairline. Look how big my forehead is. Um, these are all, I mean, these are all like nothing. There's people who were like born with like missing limbs and stuff. Okay. So that's my first world problem. Just caring about my old ass look. Not that I really care that much because at this point I've accepted it because I've looked like shit for years. So anyways, um, the, he is right. That's why I am, I'm a free will guy. Okay. And so if you, um, if you are determined, and if you try hard, although um, the morality should kind of be your highest goal, not just um, material accumulation or or status. Uh, I don't know the the gain of status. Um, you, you can have. I think you can have a pretty good life. And so, anyways, that's probably enough. I don't want to put too much. I don't want to. This has been okay. I don't want to put too much filler in there. I don't know if I've ever said that before. All right. All right, guys. I just finished watching some cops. No, I did my squat workout. And 
And it's raining today, otherwise I... Well, I gotta get my truck fixed up. Power steering is leaking like a son of a bitch. And the power steering fluid, that is. And so the um, steering's getting a little more stiff and stiff each day. And, um, well, compared to yesterday compared to today, uh, or today is a lot different than it was yesterday. A lot more tension in the wheel, so I'm gonna go get that figured out. And that's one of the nice things is that when you get the rainy days, you can go do other stuff. <sighs> and then... Because, I mean, the jobs aren't going anywhere. Uh, oh, oh, I have to go kill this big-ass hedge. I don't even know how long. It's probably like, um, I don't even know, 150 meters in total. Maybe more than that. It's freaking big. It's an 11-hour job. And so, because it's fucking tall, too. It's uh, In some parts, it's probably 10 feet tall. So... I don't do that in one day anyways. I suppose I could if I really wanted to get it done, but uh, I have to do it in a short burst, get some other work done, and then uh, and then I can go do that. So, anyways, I got a bit of a back tweak from those squats. I was using those Russian shoes, and as soon as I got that back tweak, I threw the fucking shoes in the garbage because I've tweaked my back two or three, two or three other times using those shoes. The problem is, is that the way I squat, the high bar squats, I like to bounce off the bottom, okay? And with those, the heel is not nearly as steep as my Olympic weightlifting shoes or my cowboy boots. And so when I go to bounce off the bottom, my I go into butt wink. So my lower back goes into flexion. That is not good. And so anyways, I hit the bottom on the 10th rep. And it wasn't really a bracing issue with that lower weight because I could do that before the cowboy boots and I'd have no issue. <sighs> so... Anyways, I hit the bottom, and as I was coming up, I felt a little twinge in my back. I knew exactly what that was. I just dropped the bar, took the weights off of, off of it, threw the shoes out when I got my cowboy boots and my belt, and then I finished the workout. And I was when I, I did all my warm-ups again, I did 155, 245, 335, okay? And it was feeling good because, because I was already warmed up, and uh, I just had to focus on bracing, basically. And that set of 20 with 396... That went. That was really easy because my my legs were all warmed up. All I had to, all I had to focus on was kind of lowering my shoulders because when I first do my descent, I um, so brace as much as possible. Then I lower my shoulders and I want to do more of a lean forward thing, less upright. I kind of want to be in the middle, and then uh, figure out the right the right timing so I can bounce off the bottom. Because I bouncing off the bottom is a big part of what I uh, making what makes my squat so good, or maybe not that good in some cases. Because um, I remember when I've done box squats before, and those are really hard for me. Yeah, I do have a, I have big quads, but and these other and you know my squat is good, but the box squat is is not comfortable for me. And so, anyways. <sighs> My back's probably going to be stiff for a few days, and if it gets too much to be an issue and it starts messing me up, I have, I'm not really worried about it because that squat workout was actually really good. Tomorrow I have to do squats again because my squats are Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday. I have to do squats again. Tomorrow is 401 for 20 reps. <sighs> and then I have my chin-ups as well. Obviously, chin-ups aren't really going to be affected by a little bit of a back tweak. We'll see how press goes on Friday. The back tweak usually doesn't, it, it doesn't make the press feel any better, but I think it'll, it'll be okay. I've had a lot of back tweaks, and knowing how to, at this point, I'm not really, I don't have the anxiety that I used to because I've dealt with them so many times, and I know how to fix them fast, as fast as I can, I suppose. Maybe there's an optimal way, but the way I've figured out is a lot better than it's been in the past, where it bothers me for like a month, okay, or even two weeks. I've had it where the point where I, I've had to the point where I've um, tweaked it on Wednesday, I do my press on Thursday. Or what I did after I tweaked it was just to got some blood. Because you want to get some blood to the area. Because blood kill, carries the nutrients. The nutrients heal the, the problem. And so anyways, I don't really need to do any, uh, any get any blood to the movement. Because I, before when I tweaked it, I didn't, I didn't um, finish the workout. But doing that set of 20, that was enough for today. Tomorrow I got to do more, another set. That'll, give, that'll make it feel even better. And then I got to do... So anyways, my that one back tweaks, basically I did... I tweaked to Dermot doing Romanian deadlifts. And then still on Friday I did uh, I did a set of, I did 425 for 20 reps. 
no pain. I said, just focus on bracing. Let's put a belt on, focus on bracing. And um, then on Saturday, I did my normal deadlift weight. But I've had it before. I've had it where I just... That's the optimal way to do it. You, you, it's because it feels like, holy, it's like, oh, shit, my back is screwed up. And I'm going to do see the doctor or the chiropractor or something. And I don't know, maybe that could be the case for you. But in my in my experience, in my case, it's just been a little thing. It's been a mental hurdle. And it can seem to be a big hurdle, but the hurdle gets uh, easier the more often you've jumped over it. So anyways, those are some tips. And then... If it, starts to bother, if it starts to bother you, like what I've done is I've taken 800 milligrams of Advil. That's not doctor's advice. That's just what I've done. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's all right. Anyways, I'm feeling pretty good. Throw out those fucking shoes. That way I'm not tempted to use them again. Because I kind of like the look of them. They are more, uh, there's more surface area than the cowboy boots. But the cowboy boots have the right heel for me. And it seems like every single, every single time I try and try something other than the cowboy boots, it doesn't feel good. Especially then those those, those Romalios. Hurts my fucking toe. I mean, my T-band pain like is worse as, the worst that it's ever been. So I got it's the, I got to stick with the cowboy boots. All right, so. <sighs> yeah, because that bounce off the bottom, I really need to do that. Especially if I'm going to do 500 for 20 reps. I need to pull out all the fucking tricks. All right. Some guy said that my, um, you know, bouncing off the bottom using momentum, it's not really working the muscles much, or it doesn't really count. Because I did I, this is this was a comment on my 405 for 28 that some guy made. Um, yeah, it's like okay, my legs are bigger than yours. Okay, so whatever, it doesn't matter if I'm cheating or not. Have you ever heard of cheat reps? Okay, uh, it 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 pa it's it's um, part of the it passes the powerlifting standard. Okay, increase the hips. An inch below the knee, okay? Or the, what do they, I forget, Roberto had a better way of describing that. But that's basically what it is. And uh, you can go do your light weights and you can do, get a big burn, you can do a slow negative, and then you can, or you can pause and do these other, these other sorts of things. I don't care. I don't want to be in the gym all, I don't want to lift that weight. 396 isn't really all that heavy, but then again, I'm also, uh, you know, fixing my IT bands and um, get, I'm getting ready. That'll be in October when I go for that. And uh, I'm going to take all my test suspension. And I'm going to be feeling pretty good. <laughs>